the dogs fare better, I'm talking about canines, fare better in their uh, treatment of each other in packs than humans will. And, and let me say this, the enemy has used a wonderful thing. It says a, a tail bearer separates good friends. And what is a tale born? A tale born or is, is basically a story, most of the time not true, and if it even has elements of truth, it's twisted in order to uh, make it not true. Listen, here's what we're up against, too. You know, when people quote Ephesians, that's all supernatural. But people don't understand, and Bob, I've been trying on the different shows to talk about imprecatory prayer. David prayed against the enemies of God. You know, Jesus said, you turn your cheek as someone slaps you, you know, insults, you know. But he also said, you know, go go sell your cloaks and buy a sword. And he says, two was enough for the five or whatever. But the point being is people quote this to me, misquoted, Doug. And I've said this on your show for as long as we've been on your show, uh, or you've had me on your show, is that when the scripture, he who lives by the sword died by the sword, that was a specific reference to Roman uh, military soldiers because they made their living by the sword. When they went in and fought, they were able to keep uh, to keep the booty. That's how the troops, the the, the uh, if you will, captain would divide up everything amongst his men. That's been the law of conquest since recorded history. And see, the thing that's important that people understand here. Is and I, Bob, I said this. I saw a, a Luciferian statement years and years ago. I refer to it all the time. But listen, they're coming. They want all your stuff. They want all my stuff, okay? But even before they get the stuff, they want your life. Because they, when they say they taste the blood of Christians, I don't know the power that the inherent uh, resurrection power that's in a Christian who never failed to utilize that power to keep from ending up in lunch, okay? The DHS is now talking about guillotines being a more humane form of execution. Because, and did you talk about the uniqueness of, and please, I didn't listen, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you for covering that, but listen, the thing is, notice guillotines and cannibalism are in the same, if you will, time period of even being brought forth, two taboos, you know? And did you see Antifa? was uh, stating that they are going to use guillotines. Did you see that? Antifa That's what we talked about. That's what we okay. talked about. Well, yeah, but DHS actually came out and put out an article. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. okay. So yeah. what I'm saying is not only are they going to cut your head off, they're going to eat you. And somehow, you know, I'd like to be the biggest pain of indigestion in a living mode, you know. And so the thing is, is that uh, I, I think it's it's problematic to people There's no more timeouts. I would say that, Bob. Just as I said, the word normal would be no, never used again, and everything we've known as normal would cease. I say this, the new word I would give to people today is there are no more timeouts. You can take a timeout, but for the rest of the world, the devil and his minions and his legions never sleep, and neither do they that are his willing servants who have been basically promised power and eternal life apart from Jesus, and they just download their, you know, collective subconscious into a new shell that's grown in a lab or in even a better thing, a super soldier automaton robot. And so now we've got basically a whole new twist, the ye shall be as gods. And that's the bottom line in everything. Who takes your life wants to do it because they believe they have the power of God to do so. You know, circle back just for a minute, Steve. You know, in, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about Abraham. He's the father of all that are faithful. He was the origin of where God started to deal with mankind as far as nations were concerned. And yet, when Abraham's nephew, Lot, was kidnapped, according to the word, I love the King James verbiage, Abraham took the choice men of his house and slaughtered them. That's what it said. It, it wasn't some kind of polite, you know, purging. He slaughtered them. Their blood was dripping from his sword. And on the return from the slaughter of the kings, Melchizedek, and I think we agree who he was, he was a pre incarnate version of Christ, um, you know, came and honored Abraham because of what he had done. 
And so we have to look at that. If we are not willing to protect the lives of our families, I think that is the, one of the greatest denials of faith that we can have because it, as the family of God is, so is our family. And God has placed us as the, the men, the protectors over our women and children. And, and, and keep this in mind. These depraved, demon-possessed people, when they come to your house, you even look now, it's, it's, the food might be incidental, your water might be incidental, your women will not be. They have a prime currency to them. And this is what even today is being discovered, that selling drugs, you can, I can only sell you know, a pound of heroin once. I, I can sell a woman hundreds of times. And so we see this happening now, and the groundwork of, of this depraved act is being laid so that when the rule of law does break down, it is, it is going to be unimaginable. And so the only thing that we have right now is the ability to learn and train in defense and protection of our family. And I think it's a godly virtue. Yep. And, and I, I think, too, that's really imperative because that here's the deal. The only thing necessary what for triumph to e- for evil to triumph is for good men to do uh, nothing. Who said that? Santayana or somebody? Um, I, I'm not sure. Um, well, here's what I'm it's saying. A, it's a popular so, book. So, so evil will that. triumph when good men do nothing. And evil will triumph when, you know, listen, I'm sorry. If you guys get mad, this isn't God's word. But the Lord even rebuked the time when children rule over them. That's what's happening in America right now. Uh, strangers from without will possess you from within. You will be brought down very low while they are be brought up very high. The curse of Deuteronomy, one of them. So, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you this. Do you really think you own the country anymore? You'd be surprised at who owns your mortgage, my mortgage, our mortgage. You'd be surprised. We have sold our birthright. We have, here's a good word for you, we have esophocated, E-S-A-U, whatever, O-F-I, we have esophocated, I'll let you figure out what that means, our birthright, our heavenly charge and command, we've given away, and, and as a nation, because remember, ladies and gentlemen, your leadership in Washington is nothing more than a reflection of you, right, wrong, or indifferent. And so when you got guys like calling for the uh, assassination of President Trump, like Romney, uh, you know, obviously Biden, Biden's son, others who have referred to it, you know, the point is, is that that used to be called treason or at least insurrection. Yet the point is, is that the President of the United States has to learn the difference between a boardroom and a war room. You're only as good as your last bit of intelligence. Your last bit of intelligence, that's why intelligence has to be contemporary and to be in the now to be effective. You could say, for instance, if I'm a military planner and I got two two two-month-old satellite photos of a missile base in some, you know, forsaken corner of the planet and they've got nuclear warheads on them and they're not supposed to be there, if I make all my decisions based on that, I've got to know where they're at at the time. And that's the primary uh, failure of what I would even call Christian, not counterintelligence, but intelligence. They do not know as a body where their enemy is at the time. Some can define it in the realm of uh, theology, but others fail to understand that God is practical. Noah really built an ark. He didn't put a picture of an ark on the wall and go, um, 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 you know, he didn't do that. He didn't make, make a Mandela in the sand, Nelson or otherwise, you know, and that, and, and basically Noah going to this, this Eastern mysticism. This is the coming Holocaust. No, he built an ark. In essence, you know, if you're talking, if you are having this discussion with yourself that should I prepare or not, my guess is you're already dead. Okay. Or soon to be. Because if you have to be talked in, by the way, I refuse to talk anybody into it, and and Bob will not talk anybody into it, but if you don't know your own mind, and you don't know your own Bible, and Jesus couldn't have fed the Sermon on the Mount, the 5,000 people, with fish and bread, unless a woman had been a survivalist, and that was the mother of the little boy that sent him up there, thinking he might stay longer than he thinks. So she was caring for her son. A woman's faith. 
for her son, fed a multitude, and there was plenty left over. And maybe that's the key to us too, Bob. Maybe that's why more women are after their husbands to prepare than vice versa. Is that accurate? Well, you know, I, I totally agree with you, Steve. Yeah, in fact, one of the spirit of the age of men in, in the scripture will be being effeminate. Men have lost the ability of being men. We're, we're, you do throughout public school and, and all their upbringing, boys are taught to be girls, basically. And if they're not, then they drug them into being that. So, yeah, absolutely. In, in, in being infeminate, the scripture says, will keep you out of the kingdom of God. So, uh, you know, you get, a, you get somebody who won't pro- provide, a man who won't provide for his family, who won't defend his family, who won't stand up for his family. Uh, those, to me, are the acts of, of cowardice. And, again, that's another characteristic. It says that all the cowards do not make it into the kingdom of God. So, you know, it's hard to stand up here. Steve, you've done it for so many years. How many death threats have you gotten for doing this? It, it's not something that you just do and we get on the radio. There's consequence for doing what you do right now. And, and that consequence may cost you in this life. But in the in the life to come, there's great reward for it, and so that's what we and, and, and ultimately we need to say: Where are my eyes fixed? Are my eyes fixed on my cars, my houses, my stuff, or are my eyes fixed on heaven and doing what heaven's goal is here? The prayer of the Lord: Thy kingdom come. And my part of the kingdom come is to me to protect my family, me to, to uh, see the times. I mean, again, why did Jesus warn the people in Jerusalem? It, when you see it surrounded by armies, flee. Why did he want them? Because he wanted them to save their life. By the way, you brought up the story about sitting uh, lounge chairs on the top of their roofs, watching, uh, you know, the invading armies parading around. It's written that even the women were so so assured of themselves, okay, that they were they were talking about the way the men were built, okay. It was like a permanent enzyme commercial. And seriously, ladies and gentlemen, that's the spirit of the age. So they're sitting on top. They're going to be destroyed, okay? Uh, wasn't quarter given, and if anybody that wanted to leave could leave, but anybody that stayed was slaughtered. And people thought they could live as slaves and, and swallow their gold or whatever, and then they were cut open. But the women were on the, on the roofs, you know, because the, the – uh, what do they call it? It acted like a brand in the Middle East. You go up there. Sure. Yeah. And so, so they were betting, Doug. They were taking bets on which, which of the Roman centuries was the most well built, which one was the most, uh, uh, physio- physiological, because they had whoredom in their heart. Mm. I don't know. If, I, I don't know if I'm explaining. I'm trying to be tactful, but isn't that the same story? that you see now, Hollywood playing out. Hollywood is appealing to the same thing. And by the way, people say, well, uh, I maintain that sex, uh, Steve's not going to do a sex talk, but sex is the most powerful force in the universe because it drew angels out of their domain into ours. It's That's the force it has. If you want to know why there's so much emphasis on it in Hollywood, in everything, it's for that very reason. It's because it is the most powerful force. 